All right. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so, my name is David Biela, and uh, I've always wanted to do a YouTube video, but I wanted to talk about um, basically like what I've been to, what I've been through, and um, just share a little bit of my story. So, uh, first and foremost, I was born in Las Vegas, Nevada, um, Stewart Street where I was actually born at and uh, my family is from El Salvador and Honduras uh, I was a first generation American born in the States at least they say I was and uh, um, I basically just want to get started with like saying different portions of my life and uh, just letting you guys know who really like who I am and why I don't know but uh and I don't even know how far this will go, but uh, just kind of like document, I guess. So, off. Um, growing up in Las Vegas, it was a little, uh, it was a little exciting, you know. Um, there was a lot of, a lot of gangs, a lot of uh, uh, memories with like the paletero man passing by and and elotes. And uh, and all that. Um, I remember um, racism was big. The uh, pit bulls, the fighting pit bulls, they were a thing still. I was born in '95, and so uh, I grew up in a household where I had a stepdad, a mom, a uh, sister, um, fourteen dogs. And uh, and uh, me and my sister, we were street kids. Um, we did have blocks of like where we had to learn, like you go too far, you get jumped, you go this way too far, you, cars, you know, things like that. Um, I did. I had a dirt bike growing up. We play GameCube, me and my homies. Um, pretty much, we had a good time and. Uh, my story really starts when I was four years old. Uh, my mom, one day she was in the kitchen and my stepdad, he he decided that he wanted to hit her and he fucking knocked her out, brought her to the ground. She started screaming, he hit her hard. And I was on the couch, I was young, I was maybe four. And uh, he, I remember he dragged her to the to the room, all the way to the room. So from the kitchen, through the hall, all the way down to the room. And she started screaming my name. She said, David, David, ayúdame, ayúdame. And I didn't know how to respond. I didn't know what to do. And uh, I grabbed a toy and I threw it at him as hard as I could. And I remember he looked at me and, and uh, his eyes were evil. He just had like this stare. And uh, he told me that I'd be next. And uh, I ran to my room, I locked the door. My mom came out a little bit later and I saw her, she was limping. She was limping and she was all beat up. She had uh, bruises on her face and everything. I saw he was pounding on top of her, just blow after blow, hit after hit. And uh, that's really what started my memory. And uh, one day, I remember a story where uh, she she said something to him and he threw a set of keys at her, like the car keys, and uh, hit her right in the face. She started crying. And I was little, I looked over at them and, and I just looked, that's all I could do. Um, eventually there came a day in my life where um, I, I found out that my mom was sneaking around. She was, she had other people she was talking to and sleeping with. And uh, she was young, she was 24. And my stepdad, he was, uh, he was 52. And um, yeah, he, he, that's, that's how it started. And uh, one day I remember that we were, we were sitting outside of the, uh, 
outside of like, like the house and my mom comes sprinting out and she's like vamonos avi vamonos and she wanted to step out as fast as possible and we got in this little Isuzu pickup truck and uh, and I just I, I tried to get in as fast as I could and I looked over and I see him and he he grabs his rock and he chucks it over to the truck and I look at that rock and I try to get in as fast as I could and I close the door and he smacks the window with the rock and my mom took off and that day she told me she said uh, mijo ya no quiero estar con él which means that she didn't want to be with him no more and I told her I was like mom why don't we go to Mexico and uh <laughs> And uh, and then um, she told me, she said, would you go with me? And I said, yeah, I, I'd go with you. And uh, she told me, she said, she said, David, I just want you to promise me something. Promise me that you're always gonna do good and that you're gonna become a doctor or a lawyer or I said, I promise, let's move out then at least. Let's just go somewhere else, somewhere different. And she said, you would go with me? And I said, yeah, I'd go with you. And so I did. She moved out. She got uh, an apartment and uh, things were going good. She got a couch, a minivan. Um, but she told me, she said, I think this is a bad move, David, because I think that Carlos is gonna kill me for, for doing this. And I was like, nah, mama, he ain't gonna do that. You don't have to worry about that. And uh, they came, it was November 19, 2003. That's why I'm doing this because uh, November 19 is around the corner and I'm and I'm thinking a lot about it. And uh, that day, my mom had dropped us off with him so that way we could spend the day with him. And uh, he grabbed all, a lot of our clothes. He put it in a bag, into trash bags. And he's like, you're going to go to your tia's house for a little bit. And he put us into his Jeep Cherokee. We went in there. And then... Uh, he took us over to the to her apartment. He dropped off the bags, and he told me he said, "Come here, come, come here. Let me talk to you." And he said, "Promise me that if I die or if I go to prison, that you're always gonna take care of your little sister." And I said, "Yeah, I promise you, but why?" And he said, "Just promise me that." And I said, "Yeah, I promise you, but why?" And he said, "Just go inside." And so I did. I don't know, 5.35 that night, he called me. And uh, he told me he had killed her. He said, la maté, la maté. And he was crying. He said, I killed Mercy. And I said, what are you talking about, Dad? What do you mean? And he listened to my voice and he realized I, I was the one who he was talking to and not my aunt. And uh, he killed himself. I heard the voice or the, the the static electricity through the phone. I could hear like a bang and static electricity. And that was it, he was gone. We went down there to the house, called the cops, went down there. My abuelita picked us up, took us because my tia didn't have a license. But when we got there, I got out. They were both dead on the ground. They had blankets on top of them, but the blood was everywhere. And that was the that was the moment that it changed my life forever. Everything that I did from that eight years old in November 19, 2003, for the rest of my life, that was the changing point. Um, in the beginning, it was for the worst, and then it became for the better. And uh, this is this YouTube video is not something that I talked about like 
with like my spouse or like my kids or nothing. It was just something that I brought up to myself to do. So um, I want to keep telling my story uh, and see where it goes. But for now, that's it.